A year ago, I challenged myself to recreate every recipe from Stardew Valley in real life. That's 80 recipes. I gave myself 8 months, which means I had to make about one recipe every 3 days. And oh boy, did I overestimate my cooking skills. Welcome to Stardew Kitchen. Let's get started. Let's start simple with the most boring vegetable on the roster, parsnip. I just harvested my first batch of crops, so we'll start making a simple parsnip soup. While I peel and chop the parsnips, as well as some potatoes and onions, let's go over additional rules of the challenge. I must use every ingredient in the Stardew recipe, hence the useful recipe card up here. However, I may add ingredients to improve the recipe, otherwise the chocolate cake would not have any chocolate in it. I may substitute ingredients, especially if we're talking rare fishes, stuff that doesn't exist, or stuff I cannot get my hands on in my country. And finally, it is generally okay to use ingredients that are derived from the Stardew Valley ingredient. For instance, I'll use corn flour when the recipe calls for corn, or cream when the recipe calls for milk. Everything's chopped, it's already time to put everyone in a pan and saute the ingredients. What I'm doing is, I'm desperately trying to add some flavor to the parsnips that are otherwise very bland. Once that's done, I'm transferring them to a pot. I'm guessing I could have just used the pot from the beginning, but yeah. Add water and let that simmer for a while. Immersion blender goes in. And we're almost done with our first recipe. Add a dash of milk as per the style your recipe and voila! A not great, not bad dish. Let's move on to something more fun, like dessert. More specifically, banana pudding. Into a large bowl, I'm combining dry ingredients, namely wheat flour, sugar, and cornstarch. Then adding egg yolks and mixing until homogenous. Then I'm adding warm milk and keep on mixing. This will go onto a stove and come back as a thick custard. To which I'm adding vanilla extract before letting it rest while we beat cream to a uh, creamy consistency. Before nicely blending the two mixtures together, resulting in what I think is called a diplomat cream. It is already time to assemble our pudding, adding layers of biscuits, cream, banana slices, and repeat until exhaustion of space, ingredients, or energy. On top of that, I'm adding meringue, that's a simple mix of beaten egg whites and confectioner's sugar. It's supposed to hold its shape a bit better, so I'm trying to make small peaks using a chopstick. It's a good cue to tell you that, as you'll notice, I'm not a chef. I'm barely a keen cook. So you'll see me make mistakes, fail stuff, and overall not be of great advice. But if you want to post constructive comments on how I can improve, go for it. Anyway, the pudding is back from the oven and it looks amazing. Tastes great too. It's definitely something I'll make again. It's very easy to make and the brown peaks really impressed. The next dish is a bean hot pot, but instead of using kidney beans like we're used to, we'll use green beans. We'll also use onions, tomatoes and potatoes. I'll start by sweating the onions. Once they are turning gold, I'm adding diced potatoes as well as some veggie stock before covering and letting it simmer for a while to cook the potatoes. While that's simmering, this video is brought to you by Jojo Mart. Jojo Mart is the best place to shop for seeds and other items. They have stores all around the valley and I especially like the Pelican Town location. With their competitive prices and friendly staff, Jojo Mart really is the superior choice. Join the Jojo family today and use promo code PIERRE666 with your first purchase. Then it's time for garlic, tomatoes and our titular beans, along with some chicken stock. I'll leave that on medium heat to cook. Pretend you didn't see the hand stealing parsley in the background. 
final ingredients I'm adding lentils and finely chopped parsley before stirring thoroughly. I also added spices such as cumin, pepper, paprika, but forgot to turn the camera on for that part. It turned out okay, but I'd much rather make a similar dish using kidney beans. Now let's make an omelette. We'll break the few proverbial eggs and add a dash of milk as warranted by the recipe, give that a good mix and quickly move on to the stove where we, uh, we, oh, I guess I'm making scrambled eggs. Let's try again, this time with more fat. Scramble, 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 and yeah, that's, that's omelette enough. I'm not great at omelettes, okay? On top of that, we can add some sautéed parsnips and we bam, we got ourselves a nice farmer's lunch. That's one of those nice two for the price of one recipes. The next recipe is crispy bass, for which I'm cutting a few pieces of bass fillets before dredging them. On the right is simple flour, then eggs, and on the left, breadcrumbs along with some herbs and spices. Every piece of fish goes into flour, then eggs, then breadcrumbs, then again a second time to ensure the breading will coat the entire piece. Make sure you keep one dry hand and one wet hand to avoid breading your own hands. I'm then shallow frying them. As always when I fry something, the first few pieces came out way too dark, but the next ones were great. Served with green beans and potatoes, and wow, the breading really is perfect. Next up is poi, a dish I had no idea existed, but apparently this is a fermented puree of taro roots popular in Hawaii. Scrubbed but otherwise unpeeled, our roots go into a pot of boiling water. Make sure you use a pot that's way too small, this way you can struggle to get everything submerged. The taro is then taken out, peeled and cut into rough pieces, before going into a food processor to be turned into puree. Covering this in film wrap and letting it ferment for a couple days at room temp. I probably didn't get it right because it seems the traditional dish has a pink purple tint to it. It's also extremely bland, but I guess it's expected as it seems to be more of a side dish to eat along more powerful foods. Moving on to the shrimp cocktail, starting with the sauce. I'm using tomato sauce as well as minced horseradish, a dash of Worcester sauce and some pepper. Then it's time to shell the shrimps, making sure to keep the tail, which will serve as a nice handle. After carefully selecting an appropriate glass, I'm adding the sauce and placing the shrimp all around the rim of the glass. Looks great, tastes great. I'm not sure it's worth all the cocktail theatrics though. Oops, almost forgot the most essential part. Let's see, the next dish will be risotto, which starts by sweating some onions in a large pot, then adding garlic, and when things start to stick to the bottom, I add white wine to the glaze. It's also time to add the rice. I'll let it suck all the moisture before adding some more white wine and keep doing that stirring constantly until I've added about half a cup of white wine. After that, it's just more stirring, adding chicken stock, more stirring, more chicken stock, etc, etc. When the rice is about done, I add a lot of grated parmesan cheese to thicken the mixture. Now, the Stardew recipe is supposed to contain fiddlehead fern, which is a fern that's apparently common in North America but absolutely impossible to find in Europe. And since I don't want to just spend hundreds of dollars importing some from the other side of the world, this is just going to be a spinach risotto. We'll add lots of spinach, realize it immediately shrinks, add a lot more, stir, again add a lot more, and the result is a creamy, smooth and delicious risotto. It just needs some pepper, and this will make for a great dinner. Oh. oh, come on. Oh, 
Oh my god. Alright, let's make sushi. We'll kill two birds with one stone here and make both sashimi and maki rolls. While the rice is cooking, I'll put sugar, salt and rice vinegar into a bowl. I'm using both black rice vinegar for taste and white rice vinegar to avoid getting rice that's too dark. When the rice is just undercooked, I'll add the mixture and cut the heat. While the rice is absorbing the vinegar, we can start cutting the fish. In my case, I got some salmon. It takes a while to prepare and remove the bones, but once that's done, I'm slicing the fish to try and make nice looking sashimi, but I'm not very good at this. I'm also cutting longer sticks of fish to use in the maki rolls. Speaking of which, it's time to add the rice on top of seaweed sheets about one third of the way. It's always an annoying moment because the rice sticks to your hands, but once that's done, we can add the fish and possibly other stuff, you know, avocado, possibly cheese, cucumber. Rolling them up takes a little bit of getting used to. You'll probably fail the first few tries, but after making these on a regular basis, I got the hang of it. Cut them in six smaller pieces and there you go. Now, I remember that years ago I bought this boat thing as a joke, so I might as well make use of it now. Although it will not fit the sheer amount of rolls I made. Today is Wednesday and I forgot Pierre is closed, so I'm out in Pelican Town foraging for dandelion leaves. Now, I just have to take a leak. Back in the kitchen, everyone's getting chopped. Along some actual salad because foraging on a Wednesday doesn't yield much. Something you can do with the green of your leeks is to chop them finely and add some sesame oil, chili flakes and then some kosher salt. This alone makes for a great condiment that will go nicely in our salad or on bread. And that's it, salad done. While we're here, let's make some rhubarb pie. I'm preparing a quick mixture of egg, sugar and cream that will serve as a base. Then the rhubarb stalks are getting chopped into equal length logs. The logs are then placed into the dish and arranged in a nice pattern, then sprinkled with sugar. After baking, I'd say it looks good but isn't sweet enough. Maybe using rhubarb jam as the base instead of the egg mixture would have worked better. Let's see, what other dessert could we make? I'm gonna try to make maple bars, which is kind of scary because I have never made donuts before, but anyway. In the large bowl, I'm combining eggs, butter, water, sugar, vanilla extract, baking powder and baking soda. First mistake, the butter should have been way warmer in order to make it dissolve into the rest of the liquid, so after a while I gave up and added the flour, mixing to combine into a homogeneous dough. Second mistake, I then thought it would be a good idea to pour everything onto the counter and try to knead the dough, which ended up being a terrible mistake. After a while, I managed to scrape everything back together, so we're all good. While the dough is proofing, I'm combining sugar and maple syrup in a pot. Third mistake, I probably should have added water, waited for the sugar to dissolve and reduced the syrup, but I didn't, so oh well, let's move on. Placing the dough on the counter now that it's proofed, I can slice it into smallish bars. At this point, I'm quite impressed by the dough because it's become really airy. Quite fun to handle as I had never touched donut dough before. Now, from a safe distance, we're going to watch the donuts fry. And of course, the fourth mistake was to nearly burn the first batch, but the next ones turned out okay. I'm pouring my maple glaze into a hot pan and dipping the bars to coat them. Then we'll go back to coat them a second time in order to get more glaze on them. Overall, a disaster of a recipe with so many mistakes. The final one being that I simply lost the footage of the finished maple bars. They did taste really good though, so I guess that's something. It's early in the morning and we can set up a nice complete breakfast from Aru. The Stardew Valley complete breakfast is comprised of fried egg, milk, hash browns and pancakes. Let's start with the fried egg. Sunny side up, simplest recipe in the book. Next is pancakes. Again, never made pancakes, so we'll see how they turn out. Add the ingredients into a bowl, that's flour, egg, sugar, baking soda. 
then stream the milk while stirring to combine and we're ready to go to the stove. In a well buttered pan, add one healthy ladle of batter and then flip when no more bubbles appear. Stack them high, add some maple syrup and we have our fluffy pancakes. Lastly, there's hash browns. It starts with peeling potatoes, lots of potatoes. They'll then take a trip into the food processor and come out as cheddar looking shreds to which I'm adding some salt before letting them sit there for a while in order to draw the moisture out. I also added minced onions and pepper. It's time to remember you promised everyone a breakfast and it's already noon so you can grab a cheesecloth and press the potatoes to extract as much water as you can for ultimate crispiness. Then they can be formed into small bowls and pressed into a very hot pan until cooked. Be careful not to burn them though. That's it, our hash browns are ready. So with the use of some movie magic, we can put everything together, add the milk and complete our breakfast. I'm guessing you could also add beans or bacons or whatever you wish to make it properly complete. It's raining today and I need a warm sugary dessert to cheer me up. I'm not a big fan of vanilla, but we'll try to make some rice pudding out of it. So I'm going to extract the seeds of the pods before putting one liter of milk on the stove to warm up. Rice goes into a large pot on medium heat and stirring constantly, I'm going to add the milk little by little, waiting for the rice to absorb before adding more. When the milk has been added, sugar is added and combined while we kill the heat. You can eat it warm and it will be slightly liquid like this or let it cool down and it will firm up. Last but not least, in our Stardew Kitchen Spring Edition, our 20th recipe will be squid ink ravioli. In the large bowl, I'm mixing flour, salt, eggs, olive oil and whoops, I almost forgot the squid ink. I had never used squid ink before and let me tell you, that stuff is black. It is pitch black. Then it's kneading time. The good thing about the squid ink is that it makes it very easy to see whether the dough is homogenous. It's not ready until everything is black. Look at that cute little ball. We'll let it rest for a while and work on our filling. I tried to improvise something with seaweed to match the squid ink and to be honest, it wasn't great. So I won't go into details about the filling, especially since this was filmed weeks before the Babish Culinary Universe episode of Anime with Alvin, but they also made squid ink ravioli and their filling tastes a lot better. So if you want to recreate this dish, the link to their video is in the description. Back to our pasta though, you'll notice I made a second smaller white bowl of dough so that we can have fun with the colors. But for now, they go into the pasta rolling machine thing until they are very, very thin. Then I'm laying a thin sheet of black pasta on top of which I'm going to add strips of alternating black and white dough. It takes a while to do, so make sure you really want to impress before you try this. Once trimmed, it goes back into the roller because this pasta is now twice as thick as it should be. Then it's assembly time. With a thin sheet of dough, scoops of fillings, and using a wet finger, I'm preparing the arrival of, you guessed it, a second sheet of dough. Trim, crumple everything with a fork, and dust with flour. Same thing with our striped ravioli. After that, everyone goes into the hot tub for a few minute stops and soon it is time to plate up. Roses are red. Pasta is ready. I didn't make it to bed. Squid ink ravioli. That's it for the spring recipes. 20 down, 60 to go. We have a long way to go still. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, I had a blast cooking those and filming them, even though my kitchen has terrible lighting and I film on my phone. Anyway, you'll find links to the actual recipes I used in the description below. Leave a comment and subscribe if you don't want to miss the summer video, which should be out in a few days, hopefully. Also, there's apparently a Stardew cookbook in the works, and that's exciting news because you will be able to get proper recipes, so I do recommend you check it out. The link is in the description. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next episode of Stardew Kitchen.